Uh, welcome everybody to another reading of Shipping and Handling, the bonus chapters. And this is a little something from the author, I'm going to read it. Um, welcome to the Shipping and Handling bonus chapters. Please remember that these were written as bonus content for a reason. Sk skipping them entirely will not harm the overall effect of the story for you. These chapters contain extra content that builds upon a few loose ends from the main story. It's non-essential stuff. If you don't like the topic in any of these one chapters, you can just skip it. They're just for fun anyways. So if you're sticking around to read them anyway, then enjoy. There will be six of these chapters in total, one featuring each of the six main shippers. <clears throat> Cosmic Glow in. That's karma for you. The sun peeked over the horizon. The alarm clock on the bedside table began to ring. The grumpy blue unicorn moaned and staggered out of her bed. It was an average morning in Ponyville, a particularly awful one for Cosmic Glow. For one thing, it was the beginning of the Unfriendly Unicorn's first day of an employment. Dethroned from her high and mighty position on top of Oz's top shipper at Equestria's feeding shipping services, she would now have to begin searching for a new job to attempt to, uh, to quickly become the best at it. Glow's irritability was compounded by the presence of in incessant noise that had kept her awake the previous evening. It sounded like some pony was diligently working on a construction project. The sounds of hammers and saws had tormented her all through the night. Now what kind of complete lunatic would be building at a house this... Uh, <clears throat> let me re-say re that. What kind of complete lunatic would be building a house in the middle of the night? The unicorn grumbled to herself and she brushed her wig and placed it on top of her head. Seriously, doesn't any pony in this town have any respect for their neighbors? Glow proceeded to her front door, finding back another yarn as she prepared to go out shopping in Ponyville, flinging the door open with her magic. She took one step forward and promptly plummeted twenty feet to the ground. The unicorn lay in the dirt for a few moments, dazed and confused, baffled to what had just happened. As her vision came back into focus, a ridiculous spectacle appeared before her. Strangely, she was in Ponyville at all. In front of her was a particularly familiar cave, one she had only visited two days prior. Above the cavern's wide maw was her house. Apparently, it had been completely taken apart and rebuilt upside down, with the interior somehow remaining right side up, and then fastened to the rock face over the cave's entrance. Glow's face clenched in a snarl. Only one pony could possibly be responsible for such a bizarre thing. That is, if the culprit could indeed be called a pony at all. Screwball! She screamed. On cue, the perky little chaos pony perked her, poked her head out of the, ca the cavern where she lived. She smiled broadly upon seeing Glow. The disgruntled unicorn stopped up, stomped up to Screwball, staring into her whirling eyes. And just how do you explain this, you demented buffoon? Screwball looked up from the suspended house and then back at Glow. Neighbors, she squeaked happily. No, said Glow. I already told you. We're done. You failed to hate me. You failed to help me. I hate you. And more importantly, how in a question did you manage to deconstruct and rebuild my home without destroying the interior? Screwball tapped the hoof to her chin and thought. Neighbors, she repeated in a matter-of-fact tone. As if this somehow answered the question. Listen, you, Glow growled. Take my home and put it back where it belongs, and then leave me alone. Screw up proceeded to pluck up a bug inching along the ground with her teeth, much like in the style of a bird. She chewed thoughtfully, glancing again at Glow's house as it loomed over the cavern. Now, yelled Glow impatiently. All sales are final, Screwball answered. Enraged, Glow whirled and aimed a buck right into the Chaos Pony's face, her hooves connected to their target, and interestingly, Screwball's entire head sort of imploded into its neck, creating a sound akin to a squeaky chew toy rather than an expected cracking of skulls. A few seconds later, it popped right back up and assumed its normal position. Screwball was, of course, more or less invincible. Glow stood, wondering what to do next. There really was only one thing she could do, ask Discord how to rid herself of the puppet nightmare he had allowed her to borrow. Without another word to the creature, continuing to innocently antagonize her, Glow turned and began to trot down to the mountainside to Canterlot Castle Gardens. Good day, my little pony, the god of 
Chaos's voice echoed in the unicorn's head as she placed her hoof on the statue. I believe you are the same mare who came asking for my aid a few days ago. How did Screwball work out for you? She did what I told her, for the most part, Glow responded, but it wasn't enough to actually ruin the event. That's not the point here. What I really need is for you to tell me how is how to let her know I don't need her anymore. I'm finished with her help, but she won't stop following me around. Discord's silky laugh bounced around in Glow's skull. Ah, yes, that was one detail I forgot to mention, he said almost tauntingly. You see, you gave my darling Screwball a chance to cause all sorts of chaos. I doubt she's ever been so happy since I was in prison. And so, with that in mind, I think it's safe to assume that little Screwball has, well, shall we say, imprinted on you as her new best friend. Or maybe foster parent is a better word. Isn't that wonderful? Glow's face became horrified as the statue chuckled with mirth. I hope you have a high tolerance for chaos, he continued, because Screwball will never, ever leave you alone for more than a few hours, and it's no use trying to kill her, or even hope to outlive her. Little Screwball is made of tougher stuff than you normal ponies. The elements of harmony could probably destroy her, but good luck convincing them to use their powers to end another's life. Fluttershy alone would gladly die rather than take another's life, <clears throat> even if the other elements agreed. Wait, you planned this whole thing, Glow realized? Not only would you get to spread a little chaos via screwball, but you'd also mess up the life of another pony who helped you do it. Now you're catching on, Discord continued gleefully. I knew you weren't completely stupid. Just stupid enough to haul in my trap, of course. You, you com you're completely insane, Glow declared. You put me in this position just for the fun of it? Whoever said it was just for fun, Discord asked, his voice full of mock offense. I'm just being a good parent, trying to make my little creation happy. And the way to make her the happiest is to find some pony for her to drive mad. The imprisoned creature crackled again. Hopefully, you enjoyed playing with my little darling. I know she's going to love playing with you for the rest of your life. The statue chuckled darkly, and the presence receded from Glow's mind. Stunned, the unicorn turned to Screwball, who continued to hover nearby, gazing up at the statue longingly. Listen, you little freak of nature, Glow said icily. I don't care what your old man says. There's no way I'm letting you follow me around forever. Screwball said, stared uncomprehensively. Tea and crumpets? she asked suddenly, offering the unicorn a platter that contained neither tea nor crumpets, but instead a single large grapefruit. Glow stared at the opponent for several seconds. You can't continue to bug me if you can't find me, she grumbled. I'm out of here. Don't try to follow. Glow teleported away suddenly, confident that she would lose Shrua for good. The bizarre pony, now sucking happily on a large fruit, lifted, the, lifted into the air with the help of her propeller beanie and floated off to relocate her new companion for life. Golo spent the next several days traveling around Equestria, but it became apparent that there was nowhere to run. Screwbuck cornered her every time, at every turn. The senseless creature was everywhere. In one town, she oozed out of the drainage pipe in the pond next to the witch Glow was enjoying lunch. In the next town, she stepped out of a painting in the museum as if it were simply a doorway. One strange morning, Screwball fell out of the unicorn's wig as she lifted it over her head, resulting in the poor unicorn being pinned to the floor by her ridiculous companion's weight. Glow has, was left with no choice but to pry herself free and teleport yet again. The days continued to pass, and the mare was quickly run ragged by the incessant visits from the bizarre stalker. Finally giving up hope, she returned to Ponyville. One fine afternoon, the ponies in the town looked on awkwardly as the seemingly cursed unicorn trudged gloomily through the streets, being followed by a tiny cotton candy cloud that poured chocolate rain over her. It was one of Screwball's creations, of course, modeled after her favorite trick of discords, but the unicorn much preferred it to the presence of the actual chaotic mare who, at the moment, had disappeared for a few glorious minutes. However, while Screwball herself was mercifully absent, the candy downpour attracted another unwanted visitor. Glow jumped off at the sound of an absolutely tremendous gasp coming from beside her. She turned her face, a bright pink earth pony, whose mouth dangled open in shock as she stared at the cloud hovering over Glow's head. Ooh, the pink pony squealed. Where'd you get that cloud? 
I've only seen one since Discord was banished. Oh, I haven't seen one since Discord was banished. Glow sighs. Screwball was finally missing, and now she had to deal with another of her these type of ponies instead. Watts, hyperactive mare friend, Pinkie Pie. Pinkie bounced in merry circles around the, da the dower uniform. Can I have a cloud, please, pretty please? I've been looking everywhere for one. Believe me, if you could get the thing away from me, that would be great, Glow mumbled. But the stupid thing only wants to follow me. I can fix that, Pinkie announced. The mare crouched down, waggling her hindquarters in the air like a cat ready to pounce. Suddenly, she sprang into the air, leaping right over Glow and swallowing the the excuse me, <clears throat> swallowing the cloud in one gigantic mouthful. Oh, come on, Pinky! called another familiar form voice nearby. You couldn't save any for me? To Glow's dismay, Watt appeared from a nearby street. He frowned as Pinky smiled apologetically before he turned to his ex-co-worker. Well, hey Cosmo, he announced gleefully. I haven't seen you in a whole week. That's gotta be a record or something. Well, yes, Watt, said Glow sarcastically. That can happen when one gets fired from her job. Yeah, the place hasn't been the same without you, Watt commented. Glow's mood slightly lifted. Really? I suppose any place that loses a pony with my kind of charisma would definitely feel weird afterwards. Yep, it's different, all right, Watt continued. I haven't seen the other so cheerful in a long time. Glow's small, self-important smile was instantly replaced by her usual scowl. Ooh, so this is your friend, Watt? Pinky asked curiously. Yep, said Watt proudly. This is the unicorn from work I told you so much about. We had all kinds of fantastic adventures together. Glow raised an eyebrow. I don't recall any adventures, she said ir ir irately. All I remember is your endless chatter, which is one thing I really don't mind not hearing. Oh, she's grumpy, said Pinky with a smile. Why are you such a grumpy, grumpy pants, Cosmo? It's none of your business, Glow replied, and my name is Glow. Don't listen to what Watt has to say. Watt stepped over to Glow and put a hoof on her shoulder. Are you still upset about losing your job, he asked. Maybe Pinky and I can help you find a new one or something. It's got nothing to do with that, Glow said. Just leave me alone, okay? I'd like a few moments of peace before she comes back. Before who comes back? Glow moaned. If I tell you, will you two go away? Maybe. Pinky sang. Glow hung her head in defeat. It's that awful chaos pony screwball, she cried. You know, the one I hired to try to make Ditsy fail that assignment? Oh, her, said Watt, remembering the rather interesting events from the previous week. What's wrong? Did she do something to you? I mean, besides, you know, remove your mane. Glow blushed. She, she just won't be alone, that's all, she explained, holding her wig more tightly against her head. She follows me everywhere. No matter where in Equestria I go, she always finds me. I can't lock her up. I can't hide from her. I can't even hurt her. She's just an invincible and infallible agent of chaos who has decided to make me the target of her stupidity for the rest of my life. Watt bit his lip. Where did you find her in the first place? I borrowed her from Discord, Glow admitted. I figured he'd want to help him... He want to... He'd want me to help him spread chaos, so it seems it was a win-win situation, but he ended up betraying me. One Pinky had changed the glance. Both of them grinned. What are you smiling about? Glow growled. Not to be rude, but you should have expected that, Watt said, as Pinky giggled in agreement. I mean, you did kind of try to ruin Ditsy's life, but Karma can invite you back, and you're the one whose life is getting ruined. Thus, the balance of the unicorn universe has been restored. Glow scowled. Oh, thanks, Watt. That makes me feel so much better. Unfortunately, realizing that this was a bad idea, this will not make Screwball go away. Now, hold on, Watt said. Maybe Pinky and I can help you out a little. Even a pony like you doesn't deserve to be miserable when she's learned her lesson. And how exactly you do you intend to help me? Glow said irascibly. That's a weird word. I've never seen that. <clears throat> Again, Pinky and Watt exchanged a knowing glance. Watt, you know it, what it's time for? P oh, pfft, never mind. You, Watt, you know what it's time for? Pinky asked her cult friend. Watt grinned. Time to sum up the situation by singing a random song out of nowhere? Exactly! Pinky squealed delightedly as the very air around the ponies seemed to fill with a bubbly, upbeat tune. 
Startled, Glow looked all around the plaza as if expecting to see some kind of device playing the music. How are you doing that? she asked nervously. Pinky failed to respond and instead began to add lyrics to her impromptu musical number. <sighs> when this unicorn of Stardy tried to ruin Luna's party. Can't sing? I don't know what the tune is to the song. She thought she was quite a smarty, spreading chaos without shame. But despite the fact she cheated, her rival was not defeated, and now she's being mistreated since the screwball's pony came. Go ahead, Watt, you sing a verse, Pinky urged. Watt, unlike Glow, did not seem to find the sudden musical an unusual occurrence, and he picked up where Pinky left off. Cosmo doesn't know what to do, whenever she goes, screwball goes too. Fate wants to make sure she pays, but she's seen the error of her ways. To rid herself of that little whelp, she must accept a little help. Can she push her pride away and give in and say okay? Or will she just tell us to, you know, get lost? Glow opened her mouth to tell very forcefully that <clears throat> Watt, that she did not in fact want him and Pinky to get lost, but Pinky cut her off with yet another verse. Though your heart seems teeny weeny <laughs> and you're clearly a big mini to ditch that pony with a beanie, You'll need to help. You'll need the help from me and Watt. Since your situation's dire, perhaps the song will, in you, inspire you to swallow all that ire, and just ask us politely. The music stopped as abruptly as it had begun, <clears throat> leaving Glow to agape disbelievingly at the two smiling ponies in front of her, both awaiting her response. She gave an overdramatic sigh. Fine, anything's got to be better than spending my, the rest of my life with Screwball, she admitted. Will you two help? What's the magic word? Pinky sang. Glow crinkled her nose, glaring at Pinky. Will you two help me, please? She said acidly. Of course, Watt and Pinky agreed in unison. But you still need to work on that delivery, Pinky added, wagging her hoof at Glow accusingly. I wouldn't call that friendly, it was more like forced politeness oozing with sarcasm and self-loathing at the fact that you had to stoop to such a level. You pushed back your pride long enough to say please, which is good enough for my purpose, but still. Glow didn't know how to respond to that. She gritted her teeth and prevented herself from outright attacking Pinky. What do you two have in mind? She asked, changing the subject. Like I said before, there's no way to destroy Screwball and there's no way to escape her. There's no location in Equestria secluded enough that is beyond her reach. Watt nodded. That's true, Cosmo. But what if we send Screwball out of Equestria? <laughs> and how in Celestia's name are you going to do that? The unicorn scoffed. Oh, that's the easy part, Pinky cut in. The hard part is going to be getting Screwball to do what we want her to do. Just cooperate with our instructions and everything will turn out okie dokie lokie. Pinky turned to Walt and nodded resolutely. I'll go get things ready, she said cryptically. While I'm doing that, you stay here with Glow and make sure Screwball sticks around. Can do, Walt called, watching his mare friend hop merrily off. Glow shook her head. I can't believe I'm going along with this. Ah, oh, don't worry about it, Cosmo, Watt said. Don't you trust Pinky and I? No, I don't, really, I don't. <laughs> Watt shook his head. Do you trust any pony, Cosmo? Not really. Well, actually, I can trust myself. The unicorn responded indifferently. I have to look out for myself. There's been too many times in my life where I've relied on some pony for something, and it ended badly. Relying on other ponies for help only gets you betrayed or thrown in deeper trouble. Trouble, or in some cases, you find yourself counting on an unlikely solution to be impos to an impossible problem promised by a pair of blithering idiots. Well, lucky for you, you've got two reliable ponies like Pinky and I helping you out today. Watt announced, completely missing the hidden meaning of Glow's last phrase. Per perhaps you should ease up a bit. I mean, I know you're just kidding, but some ponies actually do think you're a big jerk. Watt, I'm not kidding. Glow hissed, pressing her nose up to Watt's. I can't stand you. Why can't you grasp the concept? Concept. Watt gr chuckled. Oh, please, Cosmo, he said, rolling his eyes. You and I have hung out for way too long for you to convince me that you don't like me. I mean, why would you have put up with me all these years if we weren't best pals? Well, you really haven't given me much of a choice, have you? Glow mumbled as she started to walk, walking through the plaza. Watt seemed not to hear. You know, he continued idly. 
What you did last week was kind of harsh, though, even for you, Glow groaned. What you mean? What you mean trying to sabotage Ditsy, do she asked? I gave her a couple of ample warnings to back off. She bought it on herself. Watts snickered. Looks like the universe doesn't agree with you, Cosmo. I dare say fate hasn't been your favor since you pulled the hat stunt. Glow snorted. I've noticed, she grumbled. Admittedly, I wasn't aware of just how dire ditzy circumstances had become until Breeze explained it to me the next day. But what's done is done, and now I just want to get that mare and every pony associated with her out of my life, including Screwball. She thought about it for a second. Scratch that. Especially Screwball. Hi, neighbor, came a bubbly little voice. Glow groaned as the aforementioned chaos pony emerged from the soil of the flower bed, uprooting the recently planted roses and scaring the living lights out of the cream-colored earth pony that had just been planting them. Speak of the devil, Glow sighed. Screwball floated over to and grinned innocently, offering Glow one of the roses that had been dislodged during her arrival. Oh, look, Wakud, she's giving you a gift. Glow frowned. She hesitantly took the rose from Screwball and then watched uninterestedly as it properly melted into red hot wax, splattering the dirt beneath beneath them. Okay, below them, the original owner of the roses watched apprehensively as she gathered up the remaining scattered flowers before scurrying away into town. Glow stared at the sticky mess that had been, previously been a flower before she, her eyes returned to Screwball. The Chaos Pony glanced down at the gunk and then back up Glow. She opened her mouth and pointed at it expectantly. I'm not going to eat it, Glow insisted. What's wrong with you, you freak? Screwball didn't respond. Instead, she opted to scoop up the streaming red poop off her forehoof and offered it to Glow. Annoyed, Glow entrapped Screwball's entire body with a field of telekinetic energy and threw her against the wall. Screwball simply bounced off the solid surface as if she was made of rubber and cr crashed into Glow on the rebound, causing both ponies to collapse in a tangle of limbs. Watt tried his best to stifle a laugh as he watched Glow struggle to heave Screwball's bulk off of her and stand up again. Do you see what I mean? She cried in exasperation. How am I supposed to put up with this pony who you com that completely disregards the laws of logic? Try not to worry about it, Watt urged. Pinky's almost ready by now. Follow me, Sugar Cube Corner. Fo follow me to Sugar Cube Corner and we'll see about getting Screwball away from you once and for all. A new cotton candy cloud began to dump chocolate milk on Glow again. Fine, she mumbled. Even if this doesn't work, maybe it's at least... Maybe at least... Maybe at the very least, Pinky can eat the cloud again. Hiya, Mrs. Cake! Wa greeted loudly as the door to the sweet shop slammed open, knocking over a large painstakingly hard cupcake to make. Oh, hello, Watt, said Mrs. Cake a little tiredly as she hurried over with a dustpan to brush and clean up the fallen pastry. Pinkie Pie's upstairs. She's probably expecting you, so go on up. Okay, thanks, Watt said with a grin. Mind if I bring a few friends up as well? Pinkie loves them too. Sure, why not, Mrs. Cake said absentmindedly. Just try not to make too much of a... Watt cut her off as she charges up the staircase, followed closely by a morose-looking blue unicorn and some other thing that may not have actually been a pony. A, p a pink cloud floated behind the group, raining chocolate milk all over the recently waxed floors of the sweet shop. Mess, Mrs. Cake finished flatly. She returned to the kitchen. Dear, bring up Mop. The Pinkies' friends are over. The Pinkies? That's messed up. I didn't mean that, Pinky. I'm sorry. A few moments later, Glow found herself in Pinkie Pie's brightly colored bedroom. Although there was no sign of the pink mare herself, curious since Mrs. Cake had just arrested, attested to her presence. Where is she, the unicorn asked Watt, still absently pushing Screwball off of her back, who had suddenly decided to dig through Glow's wig like a chimpanzee looking for bugs. <laughs> She's probably trying to get in right now, Watt said, but the door's still open, you gotta close it first. Glow raised her eyebrow. Watt, I think this is even... I think that even a scatterbrained adult like you knows that a door needs to be open for a pony to enter the room. Walt looked at Glow as if she had rocks in her head. Well, duh, he answered. Of course the door has to be open. We just opened the wrong place right now. Huh? Glow asked. What in a question are you talking about? The only thing behind the door is a hallway to Sugar Cube Corner. Walt sighed. Fine, I'll close it myself, he answered, ignoring Glow's argument. He shut the door, waited a few seconds, and opened it again. 
Glow quickly noticed the apparent change of scenery. Beyond the bedroom door was a huge corridor built of dark stone. Oh, so you're re re rearranging time space now? She yelled angrily, slapping Screwball across the face. Relax, Cosmo, Watsa Dolly. Screwball has nothing to do with it. It's just part of Sir Lancelot's castle and Pinky's imaginary country. He trotted into the dark hallway before Glow could ask any questions. Pinky hauled his echo his voice echoing down the gargantuan tunnel. Here we are, you almost ready? One second came the high pitched response. The horribly grating sound of metal on the stone filled the air, causing Glow to flinch. After a moment, Pinkie Pie appeared in the snow stone corridor, huffing and puffing as she pushed some gigantic contraption across the floor. When it was in line with the bedroom door, she stopped, wiping her brow with a hoof. What in the question is that pile of garbage? she asked. This? Pinky asked, pointed hesitantly, hesitantly at the huge device as if she wasn't totally sure w what it was that Glow was referring to. This is the Super Vacuumatic 9000. It's what we're going to use to take care of Screwball. But where did you get it? Glow asked, cautiously approaching the machine. She stood at the threshold between realities, afraid to step into the dark corridor that Pinky and Watt somehow conjured up. Pinky shrugged. I know a guy. She answered simply. There was a short pause. Well, he's not really a guy, the mayor elaborated. He's actually more of a pile of rocks, who's also a mercenary for hire. He owes me all sorts of favors, so I figured he wouldn't mind if I borrowed the vacuum from him. Glow decided that it was time to get this over with. Pinky was becoming more and more nonsensical by the second, and Glow, <clears throat> and Glow had just had enough nonsense in the past week. So what does it do, she asked. You said it's a vacuumatic. Is it going to suck up Screwball? Pinky nodded enthusiastically. You know that doesn't change a thing, Glow warned. Screwball has escaped from much more than a giant vacuum cleaner. I know, Pinky said with a sly grin. But if the vacuumatic stays in here, and you stay out there in Equestria, Screwball... Screwball? Screwball won't be able to get to you anymore. Glow leaned forward, peering down the ominous corridor. You mean this is... Not part of Equestria, she asked. Pinky snorted. I'm pretty sure this place isn't even part of our universe, Cosmo, she giggled. Screwball, in her usual randomness, had somehow acquired a carton of eggs and was now cracking them one by one, emptying the context, which mercifully turned out to be confetti onto Chloe's back. She glared at the oblivious chaos pony. Whatever, she said to Pinky. I don't even care how this works. If you're going to get rid of Screwball, then hurry up and do it so I can get my life back. What's the magic word, Pinky chanted. Glow glared at daggers at Pinky. How about do it before I shove you into the machine along with Screwball? Pinky by bit her lip. Oh, all right, you big party pooper. Stand back as far as you can. Glow and Wob both backed against the wood paneled wall of Pinky's room. Glow pushed Screwball gently through the air where she hovered like a balloon a few feet in front of the waiting mouth of the gigantic vacuum device. Pinky, who had sat, who now sat atop of the great, great steel machine, leaned forward and pulled the large lever on top. A deafening whooshing noise filled the air, and even from a dozen feet away, Watt and Glow had to hold onto a gesture to avoid being pulled across the floor by the incredible suction power of the vacuumatic 9000. Screwball began to drift through the air towards the oppressive device, but the Chaos Pony seemed to realize that something was wrong. She dropped to the ground suddenly and stood defiantly a few feet in front of the vacuum tube, not budging in the slightest, despite her proximity to the machine. Turn it up! Glow cried from her position at the back of the room. She's resisting it somehow. You need more power! Pinky adjusted the dial on the machine, and the suction increased dangerously. All loose objects in Pinky's bedroom was immediately sucked in. Loose papers, small toys, even the bed sheets all disappeared into it. Glow clung to the dresser for all of her worth, staring at, in shock at Screwball, who just stood against the whipping gale with apparent ease. A pony of her size, standing at such a distance away from the vacuum, should have easily been pulled away at this point. Get in there, you big nuisance, the unicorn cried, letting go of the dresser and sliding across the floor to Screwball. The mare began to heave against her adversary, but it was as if Screwball was cemented to the floor. Glow's wig had been torn from her head rather suddenly, and she was just barely able to catch it with her magic before it was swept into the raging wind of the vacuum. More power, she screamed. It's too dangerous, Pinky called back. If it does take your ball, you'll be pulled in it too. Pinky had a point. Glow wanted called for Watt instead. The earth pony released his grip from the furniture and slid across the floor rather quickly, crashing unceremoniously into Glow's rump. 
Don't push me. We gotta get her to move, Glow urged. For a few seconds, both ponies... What? I'm going to read it word for word. For a few moments, both ponies, both ponies pushed in vain. I think that was supposed to be one, but okay. But Screwball didn't move an inch. However, she did something else. Oh no, something else did. The cotton candy cloud, which had become stuck in several pieces of furniture, finally came loose from the suction and was instantly pulled into the whirling winds of the vacuum. Immediately, the suction almost entirely stopped. There was a fearful grinding noise from the depths of the vacuum attic. Well, that can't be good, Pinky mumbled from the top of the machine. Smoke began to pillow from the sides of the machine as it struggled to perform its task. Despite the sticky substance clogging it up, bolts began to burst from the sides. It's going to explode, Watt yelled, a panicked look on Glow's face. Are you sure? Watt narrowed his eyes. Cosmo, I'm Pony Bill's premier electrician. Believe me, I know I'm an impending explosion when I see it. Now, hit the deck! Watt dove under the bed, although a little too low for him to fit his hindquarters and rear legs stuck out rather comically. Glow backed off, saying no suitable cover produced the strongest magical shield she could muster. Pinkie Pie tried to hop off the machine, but she had barely moved when the overload became too extreme. The blast was enormous. Fortunately, the majority of the fire and shrapnel was contained on the other side of the doorway in the stone door. Pinkie Pie was blown through the door like a missile, colliding in the wall with enough force to send a series of cracks through it. She staggered backwards, her eyes rolling dizzily, and her coat completely singed with singed and covered in ash. Pinkie Pie came the voice came the almost bored sound of Mrs. Cake from the floor below. Honey, Mr. Cake and I are a little too busy to deal with explosions today. Sorry, Mrs. Cake, Pinky called, sounding no worse for wear despite being blasted across the room. I'll clean it up. Pinky opened a few windows to allow the smoke to escape and distinguished the tiny flames that had caught on her mane with the tip of Watt's exposed tail. Glows lowered her shield as well. And with the midst of it all, Screwball stood completely unharmed, glancing casually around the room as if nothing had happened. Glow fell into the ground with defeat, covering her face with her hoofs. She stayed there, quivering, as Watt clambered out from under the bed, and Pinky, who seemed miraculously uninjured, dusted herself off. The two of them scrambled over to Glow <clears throat> once they had situated themselves. Are you okay? Watt asked. Did you get hurt in the explosion? No, Glow mumbled. I'm just out of ideas. Screwball wins. I admit defeat. It's so weird, Watt said. I didn't think Screwball was this uncooperative. I mean, she did what she, what we told her to do last week when we gave, asked her to stop sabotaging the party. Glow removed her hooks from the, her face as an idea struck her. <clears throat> Watt, she said hesitantly, hesitantly, could it be that we've been going about this out the wrong way? Watt cocked his head but still said nothing. Slowly, Glow rose to her hooks and trotted over to Screwball. The Chaos Pony grinned at her and proceeded to lick the side of her face in the manner of a dog. Despite her tormentous, disgusting actions, Glow put on her best falsely polite smile, the very one she had used when dealing with the scorchy speedy shipping services customers. Screwball, she said, as sweetly as she could manage. Do you think you could do your good neighbor Glow a favor and float over there into the half into the hall for me? Screwball nodded eagerly. Favors for neighbors, she squeaked delightedly as she floated into the stone passage. Glow slammed the door. Quick, she demanded. How do you change it back to normal? Just expect to find sugar cube corn on the other side when you open it again, Pinky said. Glow pictured the dim upstairs hallway of the sweet shop and opened the door once again, bracing herself for the onslaught of Screwball. None came. The narrow hallway was free of the lurking chaos pony. Is that it? Glow asked. Is she really gone? Sealed in a dimension with no connection to ours, Pinky announced proudly. She's not getting out unless one of us lets her out. Glow sighed with relief. I can't believe it, she breathed. It actually worked. Pinky and Watt actually did something helpful once in their lives. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm not doing the Pinky Pie voice anymore. My throat's starting to <coughs> wear rather thin. She turned to the door. Glad that's over. I'm out of here. Wait for me, Watt called. Oh, and I'll see you tomorrow, Pinky. Okie dokie loki, Pinky called as she grabbed the broom and began cleaning the disaster area of her bedroom, which it had been reduced to. Glow nodded down the stairs, with Watt following closely behind. Mrs. Cake glanced up as they walked by. 
Is that chocolate rain cloud coming in here again? Nope, said Watt. It got sucked into a giant vacuum that caused in it a giant catastrophic explosion. But everything's just peachy now. <laughs> Watt trotted out, leaving Glow standing alone with the Mrs. Cake. I pity you, I really do, Glow said, before turning and excusing herself from the shop. Mrs. Cake blinked and then shook her head and got back to work. See, see, Watt laughed, advancing merrily around as glow as she trotted through town see where's a little kindness see what a little kindness can get you cosmo it's karma i'm telling you oh please glow snorted that was fake and you know it watch chuckled yeah but it got the job done screwball doesn't know the difference he began to trot away glow watched him go what hang on a second what turned around yes cosmo glow pawed at the ground awkwardly um i guess i kind of owe you when pinky for help so thanks and all that an absolutely enormous grin crossed Watt's face. He pressed his nose against Glow's, forcing the unicorn to take a few paces back. Oh, what is this? Watt asked ecstatically, Cosmo showing a hint of gratitude. Impossible! Glow's usual scowl returned. Enjoy it, it won't happen again, she snarled. Watt laughed. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll see you later, Cosmo, and I'll enjoy every moment between now and then, Glow shot back. Watt disappeared down the street as his usual breakneck speed, leaving the unicorn standing alone. The corner of her mouth curled up, curled up into the tiniest of smiles. Maybe Watt isn't completely worthless after all. Glow trotted home, finally accepting the fact that her day was looking up. That is until she arrived at the property to find her missing house. With a groan, she remembered her relocation, courtesy of Screwball. Her rare good mood ruined, Glow's usual grimace returned. Even with Screwball gone, it was going to be a long day. 